Okay, what the heck did we just see? This is the Crooked Crow. It is a Voron mod that prints 90 degrees on a belt, but also can print anywhere from 90 up to like 45 degrees using a custom clipper mod. <laughs> okay, so wait, wait. So the okay, typically we talk about, you know, we got X and Y, Z or Z, and mm -hmm. it builds on Z. We have belt printers that are at a 45 or 35 or whatever, but this does both. Right. Wh what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea behind it was uh, um, have a two-in-one printer that you could print 90 degrees and eject the parts or print as a belt printer. And as far as I'm aware, too, it gets around all those pesky patents. <laughs> okay, so I, I know there's some sort of patent in the area and, and it gets away from it, and that's because it can shapeshift or change, right? Correct. Being able to print just in Z or Z, is it the whole heat plate underneath the belt that you can do that in? Yes. Okay. And then that, that, that motion then directly translates to a really tall on the 45 when it goes like this. Right. But here, here's what kind of boggles my mind, Rob. The, the Crooked Crow is, is printing both. Yes. At the same time. At the same time, yes. This is a project, I would imagine, it like is, yes. updates and you'll eventually or are releasing it? I'm planning on releasing the custom clipper plugin that lets it do the translation movements and the files in about a week. Oh. Um, yeah. And the clipper plugin is parametric, meaning that if you just give it the values of where the axles are and the offsets, it'll do the math for any size printer. Wait a minute. So you build this any size you want. You just have to plug in a couple numbers and it's like, I got you, good yes. to go. Yes, I had to brush off the high school um, or middle school trig because it's all triangles, but yes. Or the teachers say we're going to use it, but you know, <laughs> it actually happened. Now you're, historically, you've been a belt person, right? Uh, yes. Because you have the baby belt. I know you sent me one a long time ago and it's got the, the Batman tread on it and I, I, my kid Sydney she absolutely adores that but in seeing what's behind us here it looks like there's been a lot of updates in that can we go look at those as well absolutely now the baby belt I have with the Batman tread on it looks far different than this and so really quickly do you remember what was sent to me yes you had one of the very first baby belts that went then went through 13 iterations before we went to the baby belt pros and these are the second generation of the BB Belt Pros. So the one you got is vastly different from what we have here on display. I mean, and I, and I, don't, I don't mean this in any sort of derogatory sense, but the one I have looks a bit more like a science project than these do. Oh, absolutely. I've, we've learned plenty <laughs> of, from our mistakes and from our successes into what we have now. Well, look at this. I mean, the, the baby belts are going, prints are falling off. You, it, it's hanging from here. Like there's, there's been a lot of upgrades since then. So from those 13 iterations, what has been some of the biggest changes to the baby belt that have really sort of given it a better quality of life? Uh, the belts, we figured out uh, making the belts better. I think the one you had was held together with carpet tape and cloth. It, yeah? Yeah. Or did adding Kool-Aid Man help out? Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, yes. Oh yeah! <laughs> but but the, the iron-on backing to the cotton fabric has changed things a lot. Oh, okay. It made the belts more durable, made the stuff stick better and release better. Um, but also moving from those little can motors to the NEMA 17s have really gotten us into much better quality too. Oh, that's right. The motors on mine looked like they might be underpowered a bit they for were. what they needed. They were. And these do, these are NEMA 17s, you said? Uh, NEMA 17s to drive the uh, extruder in the belt ah, and, okay. and uh, 11s for the core. 11s, okay. I was like, these look a little small, but okay. Yeah. So <laughs> pro proper regular, regular 3D printing motors, and then you've got the little small 11s up here to drive everything there. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there's belt tensioners on the end here. Uh, the, the quality that we're seeing from these models looks, like Rob, it looks great. Thank you. I, and I'm not, I'm not surprised, but I'm just, right. Again, my experience was that one. And so it looks like you've, you've come quite a ways because it's doing amazing things. Uh, okay, well then, baby belt. What are my build dimensions here? Uh, for the standard baby belt, it's about 100 millimeters across, like 102 by 96 is the uh, Y. Yeah, um, and, then, and then infinite. And then infinite on the Z, but uh, it's modular. So you can, this is the standard baby belt with a screen on it, touch screen on it. Oh, look at that. Back. You can put the wall cleat for French cleats puts right on Repcord's oh, French yeah. cleats. Oh yeah, Repcord um, loves a French cleat. Yeah, the, the XL, which is in um, prototyping stages, but this prints, and it's just Legos. It just Legos together. 
because if what? You, really? Yeah. Because this is this is just a standard size for an X uh, standard baby belt, and if you look, it's the same side panel as here. Oh, it is. Just added another section on. Oh. Yeah. Rob, you've really come a long way here. Thank you. Choose your own adventure printers. It really is. It's like one of those books where you know, you, hey, how large do you want your experience to be? What are you using for a hot end on these? Uh, these are all bamboo hot ends, but you can also put a Revo um, with a non-planer oh, in there. Okay. <laughs> this the bamboo nozzles are cheaper. They are they are not expensive for what yes. they are. Yeah. Uh, no no thoughts of putting Luke's tube on there. You don't need 40 40 cube 40 cube a second. I think that would be an overkill. Maybe on the XXL or there something we go. like that. Yeah. You said it's Lego, so I mean as long yeah. as we you well know, for the room sized one, right? <laughs> You're going to need a bigger boat. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm really glad we got to catch up here at 3D Printopia, and it's really cool to see the evolution of what I unboxed that one time to, to a very productized version uh, of what's there. So uh, look right there. That's going to be everybody that wants to learn more. Can you tell them where to go to find out? Absolutely. Um, Princeps.com. We're also on GitHub, active Discord community. And we have, um, in about a week, uh, we'll have kits from Fabrico. Yeah! Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, Thanks. all the links, I'll tell you what, we'll put all the links down below. Sure. Make sure everybody has something to click to find out more. Rob, this has been amazing. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, 3D Printopia, all the things. Sure, why not? And as always, high five. You want one? <laughs>